Now hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, it's time to talk about a very interesting plane, and that is the Saab 340. Yeah. This is actually a Swedish turboprop plane. Yes, there are planes from Sweden from the aircraft manufacturer Saab. Yeah, Saab is quite a well-known brand. They also used to make cars at least, and they still make aircraft. And this is one of them. Yeah, there's not only IKEA and uh, PewDiePie that come from Sweden, there's also planes from Sweden. Now, this is probably one of the most interesting planes they have ever made. Aside from their very interesting military planes, it does have something very, very special about it. Now, the Saab 3140, it came out in 1983 and it was produced until 1999. And then they actually stopped production. But surprisingly, there are still a lot Saab 3140s operating pretty much all around the world, everywhere. You can find them in America, you can find them in Europe, in Asia, and everywhere, really. You know, even Flybe, that is gone now, also used to fly this one when they were still alive, right? And honestly, this plane, it didn't age very badly. It aged pretty well, actually. The cockpit, it seems like a typical 80s cockpit. There are some small screens. Yes, back in the 1980s, that's when aircraft manufacturers slowly started to fit their aircraft with actual screens which is pretty good uh yeah this is a nice cockpit i would say i like this one now let's take a look into the cabin a little bit there's something very interesting here this plane actually is able to seat up to 36 passengers which is quite an amount so that is great obviously we have a very interesting row configuration this is not the biggest plane so we have a two by one row here. And again, up to 36 passengers are able to sit here. That is pretty nice. Now, the thing about the Saab 340 is that I think it will be able to take off and land on pretty short runways. I mean, honestly, it might be the biggest plane to be able to operate at places, right? 36 passengers, that's quite a lot. Let's fly this plane at some very short runways that we always visit on this channel, right? And we are starting off with St. Barthelemy. Let's just go ahead and take off. Shouldn't be that much of an issue. Yeah, these turboprop planes, they are pretty damn tough when it comes to runway length. Yeah, you know, we can see this plane fly at some very interesting places in real life. You know, in Florida, they fly it to Key West. I have seen it there before. And Key West has a pretty short runway. And so does St. Barthelemy, which we were able to depart out of just now. That is perfect. Yeah, the Saab 3140 doesn't really need a long runway. That's nice. And well, 36 passengers are quite a bit, actually. Now, the hardest part of this small island airport is not even just the takeoff, but it's the landing where most pilots actually fail here. So let's see if that happens to us, too. Oh, yeah, this plane, it's pretty nice. It is also quite successful, or at least it used to be when it was built. 450 of these planes were built, which is a way better sales record than the A380 or something. The A380, only 200 of these were built. 450, that's really not bad. All right, now the question. Can you fly the Saab 340 to St. Barthelemy too? Shouldn't be that much of an issue. These turboprop planes, they have incredibly strong reverse thrust. That's how they're able to operate at some very, very dangerous places. And at some very short runways that jet planes could never serve. And let's get it landed. Oh my god, that was really one of the most uncomfortable landings I have ever done. But no problem for the 340. Actually, no problem at all. The plane's just fine. We didn't even use half of the runway to stop. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the thing about this approach here is that you have this hill in front of the runway that I I think I crashed into it. Yeah. Oh yeah, I might have killed the person. That's not good. Yeah, that hill like, really gets in the way and that was really a hard landing, but this landing here, it seems pretty damn rugged. I would even be comfortable to land this plane on an unpaved runway. Oh uh, yeah, these turboprop planes, they are very tough. Now let's fly this plane at even a shorter runway, cause... You know, why not? Actually, the shortest runway that there is, is not very far away from here, also in the Caribbean. That is, of course, Saba Airport. All right. Now, yes, I have made a video about this airport before. This runway is only 400 meters long. But is it long enough for the Saab 340? Let's find out. Yeah, normally only the most extreme stall planes, like the Twin Otter, can land here. But let's see, can the 340 also land here? <laughs> All right. All right, now. 
Stop, please. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Which we have now. We have stopped. This was amazing. Yeah, the Saab 340 is actually pretty cool. You know, it is way bigger than the other planes that would normally fly here or at least be able to fly here. This is like between an actual like big airliner and a small plane and it's still able to fly here. And the only plane that actually is able to fly here and does fly in real life is the Twin Otter, which we have in the background. In comparison to that, the Saab 340 fits a lot more passengers. Actually, like twice as many. I mean, it is also twice as long, right? I think I have now found a new favorite plane. Now, obviously, the Saab 340 is not a perfect aircraft, right? It is pretty flawed as well. For example, it's not particularly fast, but that's not even its issue. Its issue is probably its safety. You know, there are incidents with this plane every two months, I guess. Yeah, especially right now, there are are quite a lot of incidents with this aircraft but before we talk about that let's actually try landing this plane here too we're in the himalayan mountains of course we are going to land at lukla now which is counted as the most dangerous airport ever really <laughs> let's see if it's too dangerous for the sap 340 all right there we go please stop jesus christ Oh, all right. I mean, we uh, we were pretty close, right? God damn it. Yeah, no, that landing wasn't good enough for the Saab 340. That was a crash. <laughs> now, yes, about the lacking safety of this aircraft, there have been quite a few incidents over the years now. Let's actually check Aero inside. Now, here in their library, they have around 95 incidents reported, and that's quite a lot. And actually, I've seen a little bit of a pattern here. There are quite a lot of executions here when the plane rolls off the taxiway or the runway, but I've also seen a lot of engine failures. For example, there was one in November 6th last year, and only a few days later on the 19th, there was also an engine failure. On final approach, another engine problem, another engine problem, and another engine problem twice. March 17, 2017, propeller detached in flight. Wow. Yeah, there seem to be quite a lot of engine problems with this plane which is pretty interesting. And in general, there seem to be quite a lot of incidents here with the Saab 340. Luckily, almost none of these incidents, of these 90 incidents, are fatal. Luckily, not many of all of these incidents have been fatal so far. There have only been a few fatal accidents before with this plane, but a few of them were actually caused by engine failure. Now, honestly, I have no idea what is up with the engine of this plane. The engine that the Saab 340 uses is the General Electric T700. That might be a little bit flawed. Luckily, this plane has two engines, right? Oh no, something is about to go wrong. Oh wow, we have lost both engines now, haven't we? There we go. That did the trick. Now we have lost both engines and we have actually lost power. In this case, it's going to be quite an issue here in the mountains. Okay, this was not so smart. We have no airport to divert to here. Let's try to get this plane somewhat down here. I don't know. Yeah, that was a crash now. That was not good. Yeah, engine failures aren't as fun as they might seem. Now, what can we say about the Saab 340? It's obviously quite an amazing plane after all. It does have its little flaws and imperfections like its safety record. There's actually quite a lot of incidents where with this plane. But yeah, other than that, it's pretty cool, huh? You know, this is one of those planes that I would actually see myself flying in the simulator, like doing real flights besides recording videos. Because this is actually a pretty cool plane after all. Now something's up with the runway here. Oh no, that's not good. Oh. All right, that was a pretty hard landing. I think we might have killed both engines. Oh, uh, but not bad, not bad. Oh, never mind. Both engines are still fine. That's good. This plane might actually have to go through maintenance now. But I think this plane is still the biggest plane that I've ever been able to land here at Courchevel, which is quite amazing. Honestly, there is no replacement for this plane. This is probably one of the only planes of its kind, you know, being between the size of a very small prop plane and a big airliner. This one is really meant for for a specific market which it serves and there's no replacement for it which is why we'll see the plane operate for many years to come i think we'll see this plane for even like up to 30 years still flying around for airlines every single day which is pretty damn cool it's gonna stick around for a while and so yeah guys what do you think about the sap 340 i think it's well it's pretty nice huh and i'll see you tomorrow as always good night